Bank it ahead. Konecki tips it. He got it past the defenseman and gets to the puck. Konecki cutting it on goal. He scores! A beauty from Konecki! And the Flyers take a 1-0 lead. Beat the defenseman, then beat the goaltender. And then Konecki's third goal in the last two games has the Flyers on top. It's Isaiah, just reminding you that FlyersNittyGritty.com and the OMB Podcast are brought to you by Summit Public Adjusters. Hey, do you have damage to your home? Not sure who to call? We suggest that you call Summit Public Adjusters before your insurance company. Dealing with your insurance company can be very stressful. Let Summit take the stress out of the claims process. From storm damage to your roof, to toilet overflows, to broken pipes and fires, Summit gets you the most money for your repairs. So next time Mother Nature leaves you in need of repairs, call Summit Public Adjusters at 215-752-0560 or visit summitpubladjusters.com. Licensed in PA and New Jersey. Hey everybody, it's Isaiah. FlyersNittyGritty.com presents the OMB Puckcast. Flyers training camp preview. Rookies are done. We got some storylines we have to explore coming out of rookie camp as we anticipate training camp starting up this, I'm not sure if it's Wednesday or Thursday, but uh, we'll get to that. The great news is we have the full crew back. And later on, we're going to have Jimmy Basco from Flyers Nitty Gritty stopping by in about 20, 25 minutes or so. But first, let me introduce Chef B. Welcome back, Chef. Glad to be back. Glad to have the crew intact. We're, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, getting ready for the season. Miles is cranking now. And of course, we have the great Dan Silver. What's up, guys? What's going on? It's, it's uh, like Chef said, lots to be excited about. Yeah, there's a lot, lots to be excited about. We've um, we got to deal with some breaking news here that's ended up being a little bit of a controversy about the way it was reported. Uh, first, Dan, let me start with you. I think, I think everybody has on their mind the excitement of training camp, all the changes the Flyers made, things we've referred to over the last several shows. But we're all kind of worried about that last rookie game. Wade Allison goes down. We don't know if it's a knee. We don't know if it's a high ankle. I mean, you know, pick your poison. I'd rather it's a high ankle as long as that can take to get better because the knee, I don't want to go back there when you talk about soft tissue injury. And we, I guess we're going to have to wait till tomorrow till we get uh, you know, an MRI or something like that back. Yeah, you know, it was uh, with Wade Allison, it was like a, the swing of emotions because the, the Rangers-Flyers rookie game on Saturday – um, one of the biggest players on the Rangers, a guy six eight, uh, took a run at one of the Flyers players, and Wade Allison took exception to it, and he dropped the gloves with this eight, you know six eight combatant, and, and Wade Allison actually uh, I think won the fight. He, he ended up bloodying his opponent. Um, he was throwing lefts and rights. It was really impressive, actually, and everyone was so excited because you're watching it and you're like, this is exactly what this team was missing last year. And it was, yeah. you know, sort of ironic that it was against the team that had destroyed the flyers twice last year and no one on the flyers did anything to react. So here we had in a rookie game, a hit that Wade Allison took exception to, and he stuck up for his teammates. And after the game, you know, he said, you know, this shit's not going to fly when I'm on this team. And so everyone was super excited about it. This is exactly what we need. And then in the, the flyers Rangers rookie game on Sunday, Wade Allison got tangled up with a player in the corner, went down awkwardly on his knee. Um, I actually got it on video. I put it up on Twitter. Uh, it didn't look good at all. And, yeah, I mean, I guess we're just waiting to hear what the news is. I mean, I've, you know, I, I have some sources in the organization, and if 
who, who, you know, it sounds like it might be an ankle instead of a knee, but, um, you know, I would certainly not report that uh, in, until the Flyers do, because, you know, if we've learned anything, it's that, you know, you can't be too sure on injuries, so you want to wait till you hear it from the Flyers or the player itself. So hopefully it's an ankle and not a knee, but he did have surgery on that, on one of his ankles earlier this year. So, you know, it's better to be an ankle than a knee, but still not ideal. I guess we'll, we'll see what they say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and speaking of which, uh, Chef, we also <laughs> had some reports, and this was a little controversial, and it turned mm-hmm. out to be kind of in the middle. Like we had a report that Sam Moran, who's kind of leading the pack there to get a nail down a number seven spot, we can delve into that a little deeper uh, Anthony Sanfilippo, our buddy from uh, Snow the Goalie and Crossing Broad, had reported that Sam hurt his knee again, and it looked like it was serious. And then we got a report Riley Cote had exchanged some texts with Sam himself. He said, ah, it's not that bad. But about four hours ago, uh, Sam Carchita reported that it's bad enough he's going to miss some time. So it's kind of cut right down the middle for, but at least it's not something that could keep him out for a long time or so we think. Yeah. Uh, when it first, when it first came out, you're thinking, Oh no, here we go. This poor kid again with his knee. And then I guess it was Riley Cote actually screenshot. It looked like one of his texts. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like poked fun a little bit, I guess at San at, uh, and, and, uh, and then, but by by his own admission, though Sam and that, if it is Sam, I guess I guess we should say alleged text. Like I don't know. Uh, uh, he says I don't know. I'm all good. I, I don't know who tweeted that. Got this information. My knee got banged up a little, but nothing major. And everybody's been texting me. Ah, so I guess I guess, like you said, everybody was partially right. I mean, it was the knee again. I guess it was the same knee. If that's what he's talking about, uh, being back banged up but nothing major so I, I, everybody's right in this situation I just think everybody I it with Sam you, you're, you're you're thinking not again three strikes you're out third guy on a match kind of thing and, and I'm thinking that if he had gotten something seriously bad for him I, I think that's that, that would have been meant it's over and I we're kind of rooting for Sam and didn't want that to be true yeah I mean it would have been really been yeah. devastating but it's still it's significant enough to keep him out in the beginning of a training camp. So, but like Dan, like you said, I mean, you, you gotta let things play out. It's better to be right. And a little later than try to get it, you know, get it first. And then it, it kind of goes a little sour on you. Yeah. I mean, I think the bottom line is, um, you know, we're happy that hopefully this is not as devastating an injury, you know, as Anthony Sanfilippo had, had tweeted out. Um, you know, so the bottom line is hopefully it's 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 not as bad, and um, and and that's the case. You know, and it you know it it just does like sort of bring to light. You know, obviously Anthony is a friend of the show, and he's got um, he's got really good sources within the organization. Um, but with with medical stuff, sometimes it's probably best to kind of like not rush to try and be the first one to get the story out, and instead kind of wait to till there's like an official word, you know what I mean? So I know it's the reporter mentality. You want to be the one that breaks the story. Um, but it's probably more important when, when something like this is concerned to, to make sure you, you know, you're a hundred percent sure, um, of what the situation is. Yeah. Injuries and injuries can change. A lot of times you go in thinking one thing and then they look at, at a film and it's not as bad. And then we probably all have experienced that, you know, you it came down on a rebound and you thought you broke your ankle and it just, you know, it was a sprain and whatever. I mean, that's the way that stuff works. So let, let's do some house cleaning here. Okay. So the Flyers open up camp this week. They play their first exhibition game versus the New York Islanders and Zidane Chara, <laughs> by the way who signs with the Islanders on a one-year deal. Talk about full circle. He started out with the Islanders, although it was many years ago. Uh, So they play the Islanders on Tuesday the 28th. So that's eight days away. And then the season opens with uh, four games at home, starting on the 15th of October versus the Vancouver Canucks. Intriguing team that made a lot of changes. Then have three more after that. And then they head out to Western Canada. So... Uh, it's we're off and running, but a lot, a lot is to be decided 
before that. And Dan, let me get back to you. I mean, I know you're a keen observer of what these kids uh, have been and what they will be. And there were some storylines that came out of rookie camp. And we always have to be guarded. I mean, we know certain players have certain talent levels. What we're looking for is did the player check off some of the boxes in some areas that they had to improve? Did the guy get stronger? Did he meet his weight goal? Is he taking better care of himself off the ice? Has he worked on his skating? You might want to you know, take a look at Tyson Forster. And, and hey, let, let's, let's start with him. And if you have any impressions that you feel comfortable sharing with uh, what he showed last year versus what he appears to improved upon coming into this season. Yeah, I mean, Tyson Forster is their first-round pick from last year. He's a very exciting prospect. He's one of the only shoot-first guys I can remember them taking uh, in the first round recently. And one of the concerns was his skating. But he worked on his skating a ton last summer. He clearly worked on it this summer because when I watch him play, like I don't see any... I don't see anything that would make me say, oh, this guy's skating is going to hold him back from being an NHL player, being a quality NHL player. And I think, I don't know if it was Ian LaPerriere or one of the Flyers coaches basically said the same thing. Like, hey, I don't notice anything about Tyson Forster that suggests to me that he, um, you know, that he needs to improve his skating much, if at all, to become an NHL player. And he's, he's, so he's a very exciting prospect. He plays with a little bit of edge, too. Um, and the other guy I want to briefly touch on is Morgan Frost. You know, he came in and it, he clearly got stronger. He clearly bulked up a little bit. He's like weighs 190, which is Claude Giroux's playing weight. And yep. it's, you know, it's he's the same height and weight as Giroux. Um, and that's important to me because they have a very similar stylistic game. They're just highly skilled playmakers. And so that's good to see. And, you know, the thing with Morgan Frost is people were saying, well, he's injury prone because he had this shoulder injury and, Um, that's really the only significant injury that he's had over the course of his professional career. And according to Flyers GM, assistant GM, Brett Flair, going into last season, there was concern about Frost's shoulder to the point where they almost had him do a procedure before last season. They didn't. And then the shoulder gets hit, comes out of the socket. They have to do the procedure. But it seems like Morgan Frost is good to go. He's bulked up. So that, that was exciting for me to see. Yeah, absolutely. Chef? Yeah, I was going to say, too, uh, what we know we, we definitely know that Morgan Frost bulked up. I mean, Wade Allison asked him that question in one of the press reviews, which I thought was hysterical. Shows you what kind of uh, this team it's evolving into. It, it's developing a character that it didn't have before. My, my other note with, with uh, Forrester, Dan, I'll ask you this because I'm very curious about this. Uh, it was something I was plan on asking Jamie later on too. But Forrester, is he gonna stay in the A is he got enough meat to stay in the AHL? I know when they talked to Lappy about it and it's yet to be determined, but is he gonna stay in the AHL? Is he gonna go back to the O? I mean, and if he stays, I mean, the way this kid is rolling and even Lappy said, you know, we're not we're not anointing him to the NHL, but he could be one of those guys that sees the NHL sooner than later. Yeah, I mean it looks to me like from what they've said that Tyson Forrester is going to play in AHL this year, obviously uh, before COVID players like him um, basically had to either be in the OHL or the NHL, but because of COVID last year and the problems with people, uh, the problems with the Canadian hockey league, the junior leagues, they were allowing players to play in the AHL. And it looks like that's going to be the case this year. And so, whereas a guy like uh, the Flyers' second-round pick this year, Tuamala, Sammy Tuamala, I think he's probably going to go back to the OHL. I think a guy like Forster, who proved last year he could play in the AHL and play against men, I think there's more for him to gain by playing in the AHL than the OHL because he's a big kid. Like, he's already a strong, thick body, and I think he'll benefit more from the AHL than the OHL. So, I would expect that Tyson Forster will be in the AHL this year. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. And and there's some other storylines playing out. There are some players that looked good in spots. Again, there's only so much you can take out of uh, rookie camp and games. Uh, I like a little bit of what I saw from Brian Zanetti. He's a player that 
uh, Russ Cohen seemed to like and thought was a good value um, for where he was picked. I think it was a fourth round pick. And then I noticed uh, this uh, John Avon, Avon calling. Make sure you stock up on your <laughs> lipstick. Great. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, Connor McLennan likes shooting the puck. But the, again, these are guys that are, that some of these guys are never going to make it at all. And then you have other players that are going through a transition from prospect to, well, are they ever going to be able to play in the NHL? And Dan, we talked about it last week with Isaac Ratcliffe, whether he, he has to or he doesn't have to go through a transition of his game. And then, of course, you Matthew Strom seems to have a skill set. His skating's never there. Uh, in fact, he played more in the ECHL, I believe, last year than the AHL. So, uh, And, and I know, also, also noticed uh, Linus uh, Hogberg. And he's uh, he's bigger than I remember. He's six one, about 190-plus. And uh, very efficient, not never going to be a lot of offense with him, but uh, I thought he looked pretty good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, I heard some nice talk about Mason Millman and also Wyatt uh, Wiley. I mean, I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance. I missed the games. I couldn't get on a computer to watch them. But I, I, what Lappy said about Mason he liked to, he liked what he saw and uh, a couple other coaches had mentioned that too. So I was just wondering what, if you guys saw those games, what, what were your impressions? Well, I saw parts of both of them. Well, no, I, I can't say I did see part of the first one that did. The camera work was so bad. I just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't hang with it. And Getting uh, seasick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was unique. I was, it's like Blair Witch Project uh, on one acid, and um, yeah, I can't really say much about that. Um, you mentioned Millman, and who was the other guy? Uh, I'm sorry, Why Wiley. Oh, Why Wiley? Um, yeah, I mean, I heard he blocked a lot of shots, but I didn't notice him. I noticed obviously York. They said York had another gear. I think York is kind of in his mind. He's ready for the pro camp, and he wants to make a bid to make the NHL. And yeah, the, the big club, and he's probably gearing up in that regard. But uh, I'm going to have to defer to, to Dan if he has any other uh, comments with uh, some of these other players. Yeah, you know, I, I think that um, obviously Cam York is probably the Flyers' top defensive prospect right now. I thought that, that he was – you know, pretty good in these in, in the game he played on Sunday. He didn't play on Saturday, um, but we all kind of know that he's he's very close to being NHL ready. To me, uh, Linus Hogberg is the guy who I would have ex- expected to uh, look very comfortable along with Egor Zamula. But I really like Linus Hogberg's game. As Chef said, he bulked up a little bit, put a little bit of weight on. He's just a very efficient defenseman. He's not flashy in, in really in any way, although he does have a pretty good wrist shot. But he just makes the smart plays. He's very similar to Cam York in that sense. And they had them partner together out there, and they were really controlling things. Um, Mason Millman has got a lot of raw skill. I think he's, you know, he's going to be a little bit more of a project, uh, a little bit more development time in the AHL. But he's a very good skater. He's got a good shot. Uh, just a little, just a little raw. You know, Wyatt Wiley's more of like a defensive type defenseman. Didn't really stand out to me. One guy who got some attention from and love from the, the coaching and front office was Brian Zanetti, who was uh, one of their draft picks this season uh, in the most recent 2021 draft. And uh, I thought he actually looked pretty good. He yeah. showed some decent, decent skill, yeah. decent speed, um, showed a little bit of aggression. So I kind of like that. But uh, it's, it's harder to tell in these rookie games you know, the defenseman, because a lot of times it's good to not be flashier if you're a defenseman, right? Yeah. So guys like Wiley, who I didn't really notice that much, it's, it's maybe a good thing. But for this team, there's, you know, York and Zamula and maybe Hogberg are really only the only guys who are, are prospects who are close to NHL level at this point, I would say. Yeah. OK, another another quick one, because it was a lot was made about it because. Of his gigantic size, Vanderleest, Jackson Vanderleest. What I mean, did uh, did he get any playing time? Uh, I was just wondering 
he, he, I know he's, I did not where did he come him. from? I did not he, notice him at all. I oh, well, okay. He yeah, he played on Saturday, right? He was on the roster. Okay. He's just a big guy out there, and I can't tell you much about him. He didn't. Okay. Uh, I, in the notes from the game, I didn't see too much about him, and if I missed that, I apologize. But um, yeah, I agree with Dan. Uh, Tuamala is a brawl. Um, definitely looks like someone who would benefit from getting used to the North American game through the OHL. Mm-hmm. It's it's interesting if any of these kids like Van Leest or Avon or I'm trying to think of some of the other guys that were, you know, invitees that might get offered a, uh, you know, a contract. So, um, I, if you one other guy, Jackson Cates to me looks like a minor league player. And Dan and I were saying <laughs> we think he got signed probably to, to to try and assure that his brother <laughs> would sign with the Flyers. He's got one more year in college. So Noah, yeah, the, I agree. Noah's a, a, he looks like a minor league. <laughs> yeah, it, it's and, and Noah is like a coach's dream kind of player. You know, he's he just does everything right. And he's the kind of player that if he does fulfill his potential, Noah Cates will be the kind of player the Flyers will have out on the ice with a minute to go to protect the lead. And he may not, you know, put up big numbers and and all that. And he may not be the greatest skater, although his skating has improved, but a really intelligent guy. So he's another player that uh, the Flyers hopefully will be able to attract uh, coming out of college because they can lose his rights. Him and Ronnie Adert are two guys I'm looking at in that regard. So with that, uh, just a note here from the NHL. They are changing some critical dates based on the Olympics. And I think, according to Corey Priman, the NHL draft will likely take place the second week of July. So that would be on a Thursday, which would be July 7th. So that represents a change. It's going to be very interesting to see what they do uh, with that. So that's just a little note with that. And also, okay, yesterday, Tanner Lushinsky, who had just been cleared to play, did get some time in. And, you know, was out there hustling, but this guy's really coming off of a, a core muscle surgery, I believe. Core or hip, I forget. Chef, do you know that one? No, I do not. I think I thought it was hip, but yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it's not too far away. <laughs> and they, they often have a very similar recovery time. So that's that's where we're at. We're just waiting for the Flyers to, to report, and we'll see what kind of shape guys are in. Now we're going to be focusing on the veterans and, and some of the kids that are going to be coming in. And like Dan said, there's about three guys in addition to Wade Allison – and I guess Lashinsky's in there too, although he might go back to the AHL just as much for conditioning, even if he does put in a good appearance. They've got to make sure he's ready. So you, you don't know until he gets a chance to play. And then the rest of the kids are really just going to be going down to the AHL. And the Phantoms will be an interesting team, if, if, if only for the goalies. Dan, I, got, I do have a question for you. What is the deal with Ursan, Ustamenko, and Sandstrom. How's that, how do you think that's going to play out in terms of AHL, ECHL? I think that Ersan is the best prospect of those three. And based on listening to Ian LaPerriere's press conference after the game yesterday, I think he might agree with that. Um, he would never come out and say that, but I could just was sort of you know, trying to read between the lines. I thought Ersan was better than Ustamenko in – over the weekend and I just think he's the most talented of those goalies at the moment so I'm gonna guess that I think that that Erson will end up with the most AHL games and then Ustamenko and then Sandstrom I think they'll work all three of them I think they'll try and rotate some and keep some in the a- e- ECHL but um I'm the biggest believer in Erson's talent of those three I I, I at a time I really loved Sandstrom, but he just kind of hasn't developed. Um, he's had some physical issues, so I'd love to see him get back on track, but I'm just not sure if it's going to happen. Um, it's kind of a make or break year for him, but I just, I love Arizona. He made a bunch of really nice saves on Sunday. He's just, he, he's got a high compete level. He's 
very he moves very smoothly in the crease i'm just i'm a big fan of air so he's the guy i think will get the most ahl time yeah and it's intriguing how well he adapts to north america and the coaching of um not just dillaball who's their guy down i forget the other guy's name I'm not sure off the top of my head. Yeah, there's another guy who works with the the goalies in, in addition to Dillaball for the development, but uh, we'll catch up on that one. So uh, with that, we are going to turn to uh, Jamie Basco. But before we do that, uh, just a reminder that the OMB podcast is also brought to you by Jim South Street, 400 South Street, 40 years of the best cheesesteaks, hoagies, and fries you'd ever want in the grandest Philadelphia tradition. With or without, it doesn't matter. And hey, if you live down near 400 South Street and you can't get there, no problem. They use DoorDash. We get that delicious food right to your door. So when you want the best cheesesteak in town, and you got 40 years of proof behind that, go to Jim South Street, 400 South Street, in Philadelphia, PA. So we have... Jamie Basco up and running from uh, FlyersNittyGritty.com. By the way, before we bring him on, that was a right hip injury for Tanner Lashinsky. So we were in the neighborhood. and uh, Oh, and with that, we have Jamie Basco with us from FlyersNittyGritty.com. How you doing, Jamie? Uh, I'm doing wonderful. You know, anytime uh, I get asked by you, Dan, or Chef to come on your uh, show, and your uh, dedicated followers, it's an absolute yes for me. Uh, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to come on before you're following. You guys do a great job week in and week out. You really now nail it down. And in my opinion, you guys are one of the best Flyers podcasts around, to be honest. Well, I pre- uh, appreciate you lathering you. us up like that. And uh, yeah, we okay. love you, Jamie. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you really think, Jamie. No, go ahead. Uh. <laughs> well, I think Chef... Is the best chef in the world, and I'd pay fifty dollars <laughs> for the burger. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're too hamburger chef. I gotta try. I gotta try the burger first. I think. Oh, uh, I'll commit to like fifteen bucks, and then if I really <laughs> like it, I'll start paying more. All right, All right. it's a deal then. All right, you got well, you and know delivered. The and delivered. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Jamie, uh, I assume that you have had some access to some of these players and in some of this rookie camp period which has just ended yesterday we have some storylines flowing out of that which we discussed before you got on and we want to get your impressions about that some of the injury situations and also looking forward to the fun of everything as the flyers vets are reporting this week to start in the nhl training camp and this season's going to be on the way in less than a month yeah it's an exciting time uh it's an exciting time for flyers fans uh who are going to be making the trek up there for Thursday. I, I know they're chomping at the bit to get ready and get started. And, uh, you know, rookie camp was fun. It was fun. It was good to see where some of the uh, prospects are at. Uh, you guys do cover a lot of prospects and stuff throughout the system, and you guys do a great job with it. And it's just fun, it's fun to see them one-on-one and in person as opposed to watching on a stream because, you know, when the Flyers – season is on that's pretty much what we have to do we got to watch on the stream if you can or you got to wait until the summer to watch catch up on some of their games and stuff so when you have them in person and in front of you it's so much better and you really see the details there's one big detail that really stuck out to me and it's the 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 biggest storyline of developmental camp and rookie camp for that matter morgan frost uh he now weighs 190 he said uh, you could you could tell just by him in the interviews, uh, just sitting there and interviewing, he is definitely bigger than what he was, you know, uh, two years ago. And I say two years ago because uh, people weren't afforded access last, you know, for the past few training camps. You know, they had the training camp where the bubble restarted, you know, for the playoff. Right. And there were only, you know, the main beats were only there. And the main beats primarily were only there last year as well. And so you didn't really get to see Morgan Frost. I haven't seen Morgan Frost since around, I'd say, uh, man, it, it goes all the way back, I'd say around Dev Camp, in person anyway, Dev Camp of 2019. So to see him in person, he's definitely bigger and stronger. 
And you can just tell he, he's motivated. He's ready to go. He has the right, uh, you know, mindset. Will he win a job that's yet to be seen? I mean, shoot, until he, until the Flyers say, hey, you don't have a spot, you know, we're going to we're going to send you to Lehigh for all good for all good and uh, purposes. He's fighting for a spot and he knows it and he's definitely bigger and stronger. I want to clear the air with that. He is definitely bigger and stronger. You could tell he's added muscle. And, you know, he was being, you know, ridiculed by one of our, you know, writers from our site. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not afraid to talk about it, you know, in terms of, you know, the bigger, you know, in terms of being bigger and stronger. And he's definitely that. So it's great to see. Um, you know, another storyline that I thought was big is Samu Tuamala. In my opinion, Samu should start in the OHL with with the uh, Sudbury Wolves. I just, you just see him, you see from watching him from the two rookie games, I want to clear the air. Anybody can do well in camps, but when it comes to game action, it's a lot different than practices. You could excel at practices, and Morgan Frost, for one, kills, kills camps because he's so darn good and so super talented that camps, you know, it's, it's practice. When it comes to the game, and you saw these past two games, he played very well. And he's with it, and he's able to finish, and he's creating saucer, you know, creating nice plays himself. Anyway, put us into play and playing the penalty kill, which is great. But um, Samutu Amala was a little step behind, and I think it's of his benefits to uh, start the season in the OHL. Another big storyline that I thought, anyway, in particular, coming out of rookie camp was Cam York. I thought in. Uh, I thought Dev Camp, he killed it. Again, anybody, you know, like I just mentioned, it's very hard to say, A, he did great, you know, at Dev Camp, you know, because it's practices and drills primarily. There are some scrimmages, you know, thrown in between the guys and whatnot. Um, and Dan used to cover that a lot, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, but when it comes to game action, it's a little different. Cam York, I thought, played, you know, a solid hockey game yesterday. He is uh, the quarterback of the future, in my opinion, for from the Flyers' standpoint. I think they're trying to groom him to be a quarterback of the future on a power play, whether it be the top power play unit or power play two. I think that they're grooming him for that in some way, shape, or form. The organization, in my opinion, anyway, it was great to see him tally a power play goal. But uh, Ian LaPerriere had some uh, intriguing comments uh, following the game. He said that, uh, quote-unquote, he has another gear he could get to. And uh, to me, when you're looking at it, I thought he played a solid hockey game. Now, Ian, of course, is the new Phantoms head coach. He sees something different. So in my opinion, that, that, that means to me that unless he blows the doors off training camp and beats out a vet somehow, I don't think they plug him in as a seventh defenseman. I guess he could buy for that spot. But um, I think that that would go to Adam Clendenning or Nick Sealer or something of that nature. And I think that's why they were signed, you know, in case it's depth defensemen, if they had to. Uh, Cam York needs to see as much game action as possible. If there's a significant injury, I think the Flyers would recall him. But I think for all intent and purposes, I think he starts the season with Lehigh. Um, I think he's going to put forth a solid training camp. How he does in preseason games, I'm not so sure, you know, but uh, he has excelled at every level. And I think this is no different in terms of, you know, growing, uh, you know, that's why they have different levels of play. They have junior hockey, they have NCAA hockey, and then they have the AHL and then NHL. These are the reasons that there's different steps of uh, development. And I think this is just, you know, another part of his development, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Chef? Now, you, you spoke to Morgan Frost. That's Dan's boy. It's, it's, it was his, his guy growing up. My, my mind was, you know, Isaac Radcliffe. I, I, I just think he had so much potential. I know we tweeted it back and forth a couple times about it. I mean, I don't think it's it's imperative this season that he makes an impact because big guys, generally speaking, they take, take a little bit more long to cook, pun intended, as a chef. Uh, and, you know, but next year, is it imperative or is it like he really needs to be vying for a spot on the club next year or is it considered like, that he's not developing correctly uh you know every prospect develops at their own pace and i i just i hate to give up on a prospect uh i think you guys come to know me pretty well mm -hmm. I, exactly I tried to give prospects as much time uh 
you know, unfortunately, he's had some, you know, injury setbacks in his career as well in terms of fluke injuries, uh, you know, collapsed lung and stuff like that, you know, before, you know, uh, training camp last, last season. So that put him behind the eight ball a little bit there. So um, he's had some fluky injuries. And he said at dev camp that he was NHL ready. Um, I don't think he's there yet, in my opinion. I think yeah. that this is definitely a huge season for him. And the problem that the Flyers are facing right now, they are reaching the 50 contractual contract mark here. And I think that they have to see who has it and who doesn't. And that's why I was thinking of some sleepers this past weekend for like Matthew Strome potting that goal, I think was big for him. Uh, Cause this is a make it or break a season, I think for him. And uh, it was nice to see a sleeper and Wyatt Wiley, uh, you know, put forth, you know, good rookie games. Uh, he, he says, Hey, don't forget about me on that blue line. Mention me too, blocking shots in the third period when the Flyers already had a sealed 5-3, blocking shots off his arm. I thought that was big. But I thought Isaac Ratcliffe played well as well. And, uh, yeah, I think this is a huge season for Isaac Ratcliffe. I wouldn't say make it or break it. I don't think it's necessarily make it or break it with the exception for maybe Matt Strome. And the only reason I say Matt is because he spent a lot of time with the Reading Royals. And I don't think that the Flyers want to have a player just sitting around playing for the Royals while they, they, they're having a tough time developing in the AHL. The one thing about Matt Strom is his skating that's always hindered him. And, uh, you know, Isaac Ratcliffe just looks more composed. He looks he looks solid, I thought. And uh, he's a big frame, too. If the Flyers could get him going in such a way, he might be that net from presence of the future, maybe on the power play, power play two or something of that nature. I'm just shooting around a limb. Uh, he, he was good offensively in junior hockey. The talent is there. Hopefully he just stays healthy, but I don't think it's a make it or break a season for him. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and it's something just Jamie to add in something Dan and I were talking about that if you listen to Mike O'Connell, uh, about a player like Ratcliffe and there seems to be a, a little bit of a tug of war where we envision Ratcliffe being a guy who scored a lot. In juniors, who has an X type of skill set, but it might not translate to the pros at the NHL level. And they were really intimating that he might have to shift his game to more of like a grinder. And yeah. that will be a transition that if he wants to make it in the NHL, they have reached a point where he might, like Scott Lawton, have to kind of reclaim what he is. And change it to make it in the NHL. And so, Dan, I'm going to call on you and get you to chime in a little bit here. Yeah, you know, Ratcliffe's an, an interesting one. I mean, because I've talked about this. I mean, when they drafted him, the guy that he reminded me of from an NHL perspective is Eric Daze, who they kind of called the gentle giant. Um, he was a huge player, I think 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, played for the Chicago Blackhawks. Really good hands really good shot, you know, didn't have a mean bone in his body. And um, it was his skill that got him by, and he developed into a, a, a you know, perpetual 30-goal scorer in the NHL. That's kind of who Ratcliffe, the way he played, reminded me of a little bit. And, and I think people need to understand that it takes a guy like that a long time to develop. It's, for a guy that that's that big moving up levels, it's difficult, especially when you're not that physical a player. And add, add to that, he's had some injuries the last few seasons. So those are all reasons to kind of look at him and say, you know, this, this guy needs to have some more time before we can make a decision. That being said, and I know, you know, Isaiah, we talked about this. I don't think that – I watch him play. I don't think he's – I don't think he – like JVR, I don't think he is going to be a guy who's going to be playing physical. I just don't think he has it in him. Like you watch these games, you watch the rookie games, and you can see Tyson Forrester kind of getting into it physically with some guys. Right. Um, Morgan Frost was even throwing his body around a little bit. Cam York does, and they're all kind of smaller players. Ratcliffe shies away from that. Like You can see him sometimes trying to engage with that kind of play, but I just don't know if he has it in him. I still think that the skill level you know, could develop and get him to the NHL. He looks like a player that's sort of lacking confidence to me. Like I watched Tyson Forrester out there, 
and I can tell that this guy wants the puck on his stick. He wants to shoot it from everywhere. You can just tell that. Where watching Isaac Radcliffe this weekend, and he's older than a lot of these guys in the rookie game, he's just he he doesn't look that confident out there. And I, I think it's going to take time. Like I still believe in his skill set. I still think he can become a good NHL player, but I don't think he's going to be a tough guy. And I think it's going to take time. So I guess that's my thoughts on Ratcliffe. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's well articulated. Uh, Jensen, this kind of like last segment here, as we turn toward the professional training camp, it seems like, Jamie, that everything's kind of set. You, you take a look at Derek Broussard and his hold on the 3C position, and perhaps – you take a look at Keith Yandel, who has that uh, Iron Man streak, uh, and his hold on the uh, the D six position, and those are the yep. real, really the only spots where some young players could really out hustle those guys. And given AV's background, I think most of the attention in this training camp is really going to be on Carter Hart and Martin Jones. What say you? Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think the most important player for one coming into the season, I've said this, I've tweeted this out a few times, is Carter Hart. Uh, so I think all eyes will be on Carter Hart in particular. Martin Jones, I think, will see some attention. Like you said, I agree there in terms of Martin Jones, but I think the biggest attention is going to be you know, uh, Carter Hart. But there is one other piece of detail that I think we need to talk about, and that's the services of Wade Allison. Yeah, uh, yeah, I we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, nine on the right wing. So if he, let's just say hypothetically, because I'm not a big injury guy, we talked about this. Uh, you guys know me well. I don't tweet anything about injuries unless it's from the Flyers themselves or whatever. Because what happens is, is that what's bad today is swell, swollen, could be unswollen tomorrow, and then you, you get dig deeper, and it's not as bad as what once was thought. Or maybe it takes two days for the swelling to subside. And then realize, oh, okay, it's just a bone bruise or something of that nature. I don't know. I'm not saying it is. I, I, I trust me, Flyers fans. I wish I had news on Wade House, and I do not. Let's just say hypothetically, he's out, say a month, even say four weeks. Uh, that opens up a spot, for instance, for what Dan just mentioned, a guy that wants to puck on his stick all the time. The Flyers are chomping at a bit for a sniper. Tyson Forrester is the guy I'm talking about here. I mean, like Dan mentioned, he was in puck battling. He was battling in the corners and stuff like that. He wasn't shying away from contact at all. One big thing that Tyson Forrester said in his, uh, you know, comments uh, to the interview panels for, for the media and stuff following games is that the Flyers wanted him to work on battling in the corners in, in, in the summer. He said that, uh, I forget, I think it was after Saturday night's game. I think he said that if I'm not mistaken, um, but, uh, so that is a big thing. So that opens up a spot for maybe a young guy who maybe, hey, he was going to go to play with Lehigh because of, you know, uh, playing with Lehigh last year, um, according to Bill Melcher anyway. The guys, Zadie Wisdom and Tyson Forrester, for any, and not just them, for anybody who played in the AHL that was supposed to play in the OHL last year due to the OHL canceling their season, they are afforded, if the organization wants to, they are afforded the opportunity to at least play in the AHL this coming season. So that opens up a spot for Zadie Wisdom and Tyson Forrester. But now Forrester's like, okay, now it's an unfortunate injury. He likes Wade. He said that yesterday. He wishes him all the best, but that possibly opens up a spot for him. Uh, and, you know, amongst others, could could the Flyers, even though they don't want to, that they're not inclined to move Morgan Frost, you know, from the center position, could they now say, hey, Morgan, could you possibly do that? Even though the organization appears as though they want him, they're grooming him as a center, maybe that opens up a spot for Morgan Frost to possibly make the team. I don't know. You know, these, I mean, this is a big thing. If, if Wade cannot go, this opens up a spot for the young guys, young prospects who are chomping at the bit here. So even though, like you did say, I think that the majority of the positions are pretty much, you know, set aside from the line combinations and stuff, because right. we could write line combinations all day. But I do believe you are right. 100%. All eyes will be on Carter Hart. And I think that right wing, that top nine, 
uh, that third line right wing position. If Wade, it, let's say Elaine Vigneault comes out tomorrow during his presser at noon and says, okay, Wade's going to miss some time, uh, you know, all eyes will be on that spot too. You know, that's a good point because uh, that's something Dan and I talked about last show that. I, well, I don't think – and I didn't really talk about Forster as, as being a flyer. I, I just think listening to Mike O'Connell and, and the, the brass, Brent Flair and Chuck Fletcher himself, I, I really don't think they're going to push Forster in that direction unless they have a real spate of injuries. But I can see – and it's something I, I, I kind of posited to Dan is that you know Morgan Frost might end up being better as a winger, a playmaking winger. Just to take that defensive responsibility off of him. Yeah, you want him to develop a game, uh, an entire game. But it is possible that he could end up on a wing, especially now, if he gets an opportunity to make the team. They like Broussard where he's at. They like his experience. He's going to play the way A.V. wants him to. But Morgan Frost can come in and be a lot of the same player on the wing. And because he can win board battles now, and we'll find that. That's one of the things I remember Bill Meltzer writing about is how well he he did not hold up in some of the board battles in the past. And if he does do a better job with that, that like you're saying, Jamie, it might earn him a spot. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't throw anything by this organization. Shoot, they tried to convert Samuel Moore into a forward last season, right? And not only not only him, who, who else? Uh, there was another uh, uh, person uh, they tried throwing. Uh, Mark Friedman played forward for the outdoor game uh, or something. <laughs> I think it was around the outdoor game, if I'm not mistaken, right? But, uh, you know, so I don't throw anything by the Flyers to convert possibly if they if Wade Allison misses time and says, hey, Morgan, this is your shot. Uh, not this is your shot, but, like, if you have a good camp, you could possibly make the team you know, maybe at the wing position. Uh, but I think that that would be said before camp begins. Uh, in my opinion, I think that they would want all camp to try to convert him into a winger possibly. Uh, but no, I'm not shutting the door on that. Not saying I think the guy is super talented. I, I really do. I think he's going to be one hell of a player. Uh, I, 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 he's, <laughs> he, you just don't see this type of talent very often not excel at the uh, NHL level. And uh, I, I just think that they wouldn't sh- shut the door on him being a center, possibly in, in, in time. But now if there's an immediate position, I think we'd have to peg Morgan Frost as a person to buy for that position. Yeah. And, and you know, you think about it, both Simone Gagne and John LeClaire were centers yeah. coming out of, out of uh, you know, their, their uh, lower levels. Was as well. What's that? And Forster, Forster yeah. was also Forster. You know, if Forster skating there. improves. Uh, Dan, let me ask you this before we, we get rolling. Is there anything wrong with maybe taking a look at Forster as a center? Because he, he has every other element in his game, and it would really behoove that. It might help him play a better game overall. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not qualified to comment on i mean if we're talking about forster potentially making the nhl this season i i don't no I no not, not so, no just at, at the ahl level being a center trying him out there yeah, i mean i don't you know I, I will leave that to the coaches i have not seen enough of forster to be able to like comment on if i think he'd be an effective center to me he looks like like a a prototypical power forward uh winger type you know, he's got a really good shot. He likes to bang a little bit. So to me, that says winger more than center to me. You know, we've talked a little bit about one of the guys who I feel like has the skill set to be a center at some point is Joel Farabee. And Ron Hextall used to mm-hmm. talk about yep. that a little bit yep. as well. Yep. Like, Farabee's a guy who, who I think at some point you could look at at center. I don't know if they'll actually do it. But, you know, the, the best solution of his Frost comes in and kind of take, takes that role. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, I wouldn't comment on Forster. I wouldn't be looking to move him to center, but if the Flyers see something that they think um, makes them think that he can succeed there, then maybe you look at it. Gotcha. Uh, Chef? Yeah, I was, just, I was just thinking, you know, uh, Farabee does have, like, the defensive mind and, like, the knock on 
Morgan Frost, when he was up the other previous times, he, he was missing defensive assignments. He, he didn't know who to cover when to come back on, on a, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, I mean, I, I see him as like, he's been, we were comparing him to Giroux in size and skill level earlier. So hopefully maybe, maybe it is an option to move him to wing somewhere down the line to take that pressure off him and that way let, let, have him be free to develop and, and be the high player that he can be. And I just think that, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how it's Giroux. We made, we were, we made move that Giroux made to wing kind of added a couple more years onto his life. And, you know, with Morgan Frost with a shoulder injury centers, you know, they too, uh, do tend to have those over the years. So maybe it's, it's another way to get a little more, a couple years out of them as well. I, I, I just think it would be, a, a smart idea at least to try him at, at wing to see what happens. Uh, I think he could flourish there. And I think Joel Faraby could develop into a good one because he has a defensive mindset as it is. Yeah. I think there's some flexibility. I guess that's really what, what we're driving yeah. across. And like Dan said, we're, we're going to let the coaches make these decisions, but conceiving that some of these players could be tried out, you know, look, Drew came in from juniors as a winger. And when mm-hmm. they moved him to center, that was completely novel from what I understand. So it's not implausible that something like that could work out. Uh, so, Jamie, I just wanted to thank you for coming on and, and just wondering if there's uh, any last kind of like bit of news or anything you wanted to say to kind of sum up uh, to, for the folks tonight. Yeah, so uh, Elaine Vigneo is going to speak tomorrow at noon. And hopefully that um, he offers more clarity. And I think Chuck Fletcher is um, supposed to speak as well, whether that be on Tuesday or Wednesday uh, as a prelude to, uh, you know, a training camp opening. And hopefully, you know, there's more clarity on your Sammy Warren and, um, you know, Wade Allison, you know, injuries or possible injuries because we don't, you know, really know. And I just hope that both of those players are, okay and whatnot but uh other than that i mean it, it everything pretty much you guys already know you know there's going to be some spots you know whether it be in the top nine if you know wade allison on but i knock on wood uh unfortunately misses some time but i i just think that this is a big big year for the goaltending position the defense appears to be there uh the forwards you know the special teams i think the, the power play penalty kill will be much better so I think all eyes is going to, unfortunately going to rely on a, a 23-year-old net net in uh, Carter Hart and, uh, like Isaiah said, in Martin Jones. But no, other than that, oh, Nolan Patrick re-signed for a two-year deal. Yeah, yeah, uh, we saw that. Uh, yeah, net, uh, 1.2 million AAV. But aside from that, no, I think all is, all is well on a standpoint. I will say this to your fans. I'm going to be throwing salamis from the press box on the ice when Keith Yandel or Derek Broussard scores or Nate Tom. <laughs> three players in particular, I'm throwing a salami on the ice. You know, I know, like, the squids were big, you know, back in the day. The rats were big, you know, for the Florida Panthers and whatnot. And some people are throwing some really weird things on the ice, you know, and bras and all this other stuff. But uh-huh. I think that uh, I think it's time for a salami to be thrown on the ice. So anytime any one of those players, Derek Broussard, Keith Yandel, or uh, Nate Thompson scores, and I'm in the press box at night. A salami's going on the ice. Okay, so we'll we'll watch you get escorted from the building. Jamie yeah. has <laughs> left the building. I can hear Lou Nolan now. Salamis. Everybody gets a salami. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good to know. You'll know who the salami king is. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> All right. So Jamie, with that, where can, what are your social media coordinates? At Jamie Basco or at Flyers Nitty. Uh, you know, everyone does a great job. Uh, we wouldn't be here without everyone's support. The fans, my God, you guys are amazing. And, uh, you know, to come on your show is quite an honor. But um, it's been a crazy year. It's been a crazy few years, I'd say. But uh, you know what? All in all is good. All in all is well. And uh, we just got to keep plugging. But uh, thanks a lot. You got it, Jamie. Anytime. We appreciate it and appreciate the support of Flyers and Nitty Gritty dot com. And make sure you get down to Jim South Street while you're at it. Uh, Dan, wh- where can people find you on social media? So they can find me on Twitter at DSilver88. Throw me a follow. We can argue. We can chat about whatever you want. 
Um, and uh, yeah, be a lot of action here heading up to uh, training camp and the, the season starting. I, I, can't, I can't wait. Great, great. Chef? You, you can find me at Chef to the left B. And yeah, it, I can't wait for this to start. I've been hyped for a couple of weeks now and, and looking forward to, to covering all this and talking some hockey with you guys is some of the best fun in the world, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and you're welcome. It is fun, man. It's just sometimes we lose sight of that while I'm doing all my editing, trying to correct all my mistakes. So <laughs> you know, the Flyers end up uh, this Tuesday, the 28th. They play the New York Islanders. We mentioned Jamie that the the Islanders signed uh, Zetano Chara, coming full circle, as it should say, and uh, yeah. that'll be interesting. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be some kind of coverage on that one. And, and with that. Um, Actually, it's funny you mention that because Andy yeah. Andreoff just signed a contract with him today as well, and uh, Cole Bourgeau resigned with him. So, oh, good, yeah. good to know. Uh, is Zach Parisi? Is Zach Parisi? Is he officially listed yet, or is that still a show game? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say yes or no to that. I'm not sure. Uh, All right, but we'll be watching that one. He'll sneak in. It's not on cap friendly yet. No, no, no! Don't sneak him in like there, but no money yet. He's really good at that. They'll, they'll sign him like a minute before the opener. Dude, and Lou Lamarillo him. is amazing. Yeah, isn't he? yeah. I mean, yeah. like people, people were saying, "Oh, Kyle Palmieri is available." Yeah, okay. And yeah, uh, no, he wasn't. But like, you see, you see a Kyle Palmieri waiting there two months after a free agency open, and people are like, "Oh, yeah, we could sign Kyle Palmieri." I'm like, you know, he's already has a contract in place, right? They're just yeah. waiting for cap space. Uh, same thing with Casey Zizekas. That's who I wanted the Flyers actually to uh, try to, uh, you know, go after. But I think his heart was probably in Long Island anyway. But Casey Zizekas is one of those buzz killers for the Flyers. Just yeah. Kills them. yeah. Well, Danny's hopefully we'll out. have we'll have some pushback this like year. Tyler, maybe he's we'll... like a, a Tyler Pitt like two point oh. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe he'll run into Risto one point oh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, Risto will be a piece of shit that's a little bit too much for Casey to deal with. Hopefully, I, I'm ready for w- Risto. He'll become a fan favorite when he grabs Sidney Crosby by the neck and just throws him out of the crease. And <laughs> he'll be a fan favorite then. But that's, actually, I forgot to mention that. Samuel Urson, I wanted to see. This might be an organizational thing now, trying to teach the goaltenders, hey, push the players, bang them, uh, you know, if they're in your sight. And I wonder if Kim Dillaball, I'm going to find out at uh, training camp on uh, Thursday to see if that – I saw Urson do that a lot this weekend, and I saw Ustamenko at times do that too. I wonder, because you don't see, I didn't, well, I haven't seen Carter Hart do that too much. He just like, well, he did the toward the end of the season. Oh, he did. did. He, uh, I, I yeah, that. a couple of times. Or, he remember he was getting frustrated for a while too when he was yeah. having that fan dress. Yeah. He really, he, 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 he pushed at somebody. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I saw Urson do that a lot. And I was like, man, I hope they teach him to whack, you know, like Hextel. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that, that, that's a, you would think Hextel would still be in the organization. Okay, so we had OMB after hours. I, I like it. Fourth period. <laughs> okay, so uh, you can follow the OMB podcast at OMB Puck, at OMB Puck on Twitter. We'd have a Facebook page. Please give us a follow or subscribe, whatever applies to one of the uh, multiple platforms we have. We have a YouTube channel, so check that out. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And it's always free at and it moves us up the charts when people are looking for Philadelphia Flyer podcasting. You can follow me, Isaiah, I-S-A-I-A-H, underscore 520. Isaiah, don't forget the underscore 520 if you want to check out anything I have to say. And with that, folks, I guess we'll come back after, I guess after the exhibition games and we'll get all that news to you. Until next time, everybody, take care. 